Before we learn how to create a database from scratch, which is what we're going to be doing in the next training video, I want to briefly introduce you to the four objects we've been talking so much about. And here they are again, as we've seen in previous training videos. You've got your tables, queries, forms, and reports. But now I want to open them up. And basically, when you open up any one of these objects, you're going to have two views. Well, some you'll have more, and others you'll just have two. And basically, the views I want to show you is the front end view, like for data entry for forms, queries, and tables, and then the design view, so you can set up and design your tables, queries, forms, and reports. So, for example, like the books table, double click, it didn't create itself or design itself, meaning that, well, you create the table and you save the name of it and call it books, but what about the fields? You have to set those up. And one way you can do that is just by coming over here where it says click to add and type in the field's name. The other way is you can go ahead and go to the design view, flip the view here from the front end to the back end by coming up here on the home tab to the views group. And you see the pencil ruler and the triangle. Well, those are design instruments, so click on it. And we're in the design view because it's got its related contextual design tab. And you can see down below we've got our field names that you can type in here and then set the data type or type of data that you want to be entered into that field or displayed. Like when you type in a number, it'll display it in currency. So that's an oversimplification of the design, and I don't want to dwell on it too much because we'll go over it more in greater detail in a later training video, so we don't get overwhelmed here. Let's go back to the front end view, the data sheet view, by coming up here on the design tab to the views group and clicking on the data sheet button there, and we're back to the front end view. Now on the front end view, once you have your field set up, you can start entering in records or the data for that field and then for the title and then for the book price, which when combined all together equals one record. And you can see down below in the navigation record bar that if you want to go from the first record to the second record, go ahead and click on next and it goes to the next record and it says you're on record two out of how many? Ten. And you can do that. You can go to the next one, you can go to the previous one, or you can go to the first record or go to the last record. Or if you want to go to like record number six, just go ahead and click in that box there, delete what's there, type in six, hit enter, and boom, takes me right to it. And then if I want to enter in a new record, I need to go into the last blank row here, just click there, and then I can just start typing in the book number, title, and book price, and then it'll save. But what if you're like in record, what's that one, number six out of a thousand? I don't want to be scrolling and scrolling and scrolling to get to the last blank line here to enter in a new record. Oh, that'll be annoying. Instead, just come down here and click on that last button, new blank record. Click on it, takes you right to it, and then just start typing. And then if you want to search for a record, you can come down below in the search box, click in it, and then type in, let's say, cartoon. Oh, there we go. Found it. First one, cartoons out of, well, that's the only one. Cool. So that's the tables, more specifically the book table. Next are queries, and queries are based upon the data found in the books table. And why would you want a query? Well, the basic things that it can do is that you can say instead of seeing all the fields in the books table, let's say you had maybe a dozen fields here or 20, but you just want to focus on maybe the book title and book price. You don't need to pull up everything else that would come up with that table and then sort through it and scroll over here to scroll back. Again, if you had a dozen fields or columns here, each column represented of a field here that you want to scroll through, well, go ahead and create a query, and that's one way to use a query. But more specifically, it's to be able to set in criteria to filter through all this information here from the table, like maybe if you just want to see only those book numbers that begin with CA and that a book price is greater than $12, well, you can set that up in queries too. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. We've got the books query, and that should be an indicator that it's based upon the books table, but how do you find out? Well, let's double click to open it up, and let's see if we can do some deductive reasoning. Book number and title, that comes from, hey, book number and title in the books table. Let's go back to the query here. And like all access objects, it's got a design view, which you can come up here on the home tab again and click on the design button and it takes you right to it. And hey, there's the table right there with all the fields from it. And then what we want to see in the query, we just go ahead and pull it down into the grid below and that's what's going to pull in. Not everything, we get a pick and choose. Oh yeah. And then down below, you've got the criteria row that you can go ahead and type in. Well, I just want to see the book number that begins with uh, CA 
and maybe all the titles that begin with the letter A. In any case, we'll go over that in greater detail in a later training video. So let's keep it simple and go back to the data sheet view. Come up here from the design tab in the results group and click on the data sheet button. So now that you're familiar with flipping between views by clicking on the design view, data sheet view, design view, you can also right click on the tabs and also go to design or to data sheet. Well, they're SQL, but we're not going to be covering that. I want to keep it to the basics here. So there's for the query. And what you do in here, as far as updating any information or adding new records, because it's based upon the books table, it'll update that as well. So if I add a record, it'll add it to the books table. If I edit the record and I change the number here from 412 to 413, it'll go into the books table and update the 412 to 413 as well. So you want to be careful what you do here. It's not just for being able to sort between data, but it also helps that once you break it down, into those things that you just want to see from the books table that you can quickly make edits there and not have to well go back to the books table and scroll through everything to make an edit over here or an edit over here if you have a dozen fields or more or well even six fields is quite a bit for me in any case there we go and then we have forms now we've got a form that is based upon books so let's double click to open it up in its front end view and a form is a way to view your data from the table because it's based upon, again, the table, the data in the books table. And the form allows you to control how you want to view it as opposed to a query or just the books because those are in grids or spreadsheets. This way you can go ahead and say, I don't want it from left to right. I want the book number here. And you can actually say, well, I want the title over here, maybe the book price down here. In any case, you can go ahead and control how the fields are being viewed and what's going to be viewed first. And right here, it's going to be the book number followed by the title and then the book price. And then below that, we have the companies that ordered this book. And right now, I just have one company, the customer number here, which is CS-2. I could fix that and also include the customer name if I wanted to. But in order for me to have this subform here that ties it to the books, well, you have to create a relationship, as we talked about, because a relationship between somebody who bought the book is going to be, well, there's the books and you got the customers. And we'll talk about how we can connect those and relate them so when somebody buys a book, like if they called up right now and said, hey, I want to go ahead and buy your book here, Drawing Cartoons. Well, I can come down here into the new record and type in the customer's number or their name if I had their name and I wasn't going by their number. But you can go ahead and design that however you want. And it will make more sense probably as we continue on because remember, access is a process when it comes to learning. I wouldn't watch just the first couple of training videos or skip them because they're all layered one on top of another. And you learn a lot, and hopefully you don't skip. But in any case, you can go ahead and type in the customer's name, number, and all the information there. Save it. Now we have two customers that have purchased this book. Cool. And again, how do you know it's based upon the books table? Well, deductive reasoning would show you that. But if you really need solid evidence, then go ahead and let's come up here and right click on the tab for our form and go to the design view and that's what the design looks like and it's a grid here that you can go ahead and use these little dots here to align them just so in your form and once you go to the design view I mean you can select and move these fields around but I digress we'll cover that in a later training video but let me come up here because we're in the design view on the contextual related design tab and go to the tools group and open up the property sheet. Now on the property sheet, well, I've got the property selected for what I have selected here, but I need the properties for the entire form. So I'll come up here and click in that square right there. So it says, okay, what are the properties for the entire form? Well, the properties that I want to find out is where is the record source? Where's the data coming from? And you can see over here, it's the books. And we've got the prefix TBL. Now, why would you want to go ahead and put prefixes in front of your tables, queries, forms, and reports? Well, when it comes to the back-end view here, this is one reason, is because when you click on the drop-down arrow and you want to base this form upon a table, like the books table, and not the books query, you see how if I didn't have the prefix QRY or TBL, I'd have two books? Well, that ain't going to work, because then I'd have to go, hmm, I wonder which is which. So when it comes to naming your tables, queries, forms, and reports, it's a good idea to have your naming convention here with a three-letter prefix. I don't do it because I don't name them the same. Like when I create a query, I'll type in something that I'll remember as a query, but it's up to you. 
but by default it's what they recommend so you don't get confused as you can see over here if they have the same names which one's the table and which one's the books that you want to base this form upon so let's go ahead and close out of here and go back to the form view which you can right click and go to form view and there you go and you can go ahead and view the current record that you're on which down below there you go you got your record navigation bars so there's one two, three, and of course you can do everything that I just went over in the tables and also you can do the same thing in the queries. Mess with the record navigation bar down below. Takes us right to record six. You can go ahead and click on new blank record for the books here and go ahead and type in a new book number, book title, and book price. So there's the forms. Last but not least is we got our reports. So let's go ahead and double click and open that up. Opens up in the, what view is this? If you're not sure what view you're in, you can do, well, a couple of things. You can come up here on the Home tab to the Views group, of course, and then go ahead and click on the drop-down arrow, and whatever's highlighted, that's the view that you're in. And, well, let me hover off of it. You can see the Report View icon is highlighted, so we're in the Report View, but if I want to print it off or get the Print Preview, so I can see what it looks like before I click on the Print button, before it comes out of the printer, then go ahead and click on that. Now we're in print preview that you can go ahead and click on it to zoom out to get a basic overview of the layout and click on it to zoom in. In any case, you can do that or you can right click here and change views or just right click anywhere in the middle of the print preview. And we can go to report view, which is the default view. And then, of course, how was it designed? Well, right click anywhere, go to the design view. And there you go, just like the forms design view. You got your little dots here, so you can go ahead and line your fields just so. And we'll go over that in greater detail in a later training video. And then if you want to verify that the source of the data is coming from the books table, the record source, again, you want to bring up the property sheet for your design view here, as we did for the form design for books. And you can come up here on the design tab to the tools group, click on property sheet. And it brings it up. And just make sure that you've got that little box selected here. Or, well, you click off in a blank area. So it selects the entire report and not just an item or a field, a text box of the report. Because right here we've got label 6. And, well, that's not going to tell us where the data is being pulled from. So you want to be able to select the entire report. You can click off in a blank area. And you can see when I do that, that little box there gets filled in with the black, with the smaller black box. And so you can see over here it's the report, or you can click on the drop down arrow and find report, and it's still selected. Or you can click down below in the off the grid here in a blank area, and it's still for report. In any case, come over here, and you've got a bunch of different tabs one for formatting your design, for the data, events, others, or if you're not sure where to look, you can click on all because that has all. And you can see the record source is the TBL books. And you can click on that drop down arrow and change it if you'd like. And that's a good idea for this database that we do have the three letter prefix for our tables and our queries. So I can identify which one. And in any case, this one, let me click off, is based upon the books table. And then when we're done, let's go ahead and we can close out, close out, or right click and close all, or just close the one that we're on, but let's close all. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.